Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're gonna look at top five things to know about push-pull. I can already hear it. I already know push-pull. I'm sure you do. And you probably know it pretty good, and you probably know some of these tips. But we get questions on the forum all the time about push-pull being used in a certain way, and people being totally surprised to find out that there's a modifier key or that it push pulls geometry based on other geometry around the face you're working with. So these are the kind of things I wanna jump into and show you right now. So here's my top five things to know about using push pull. All right, so we're gonna zoom in here and I got two just simple faces. They're just, they're rectangles. One was drawn flat, one was rotated up. So if I look underneath here, you can see gray face facing down, white face facing up. So the way this works, I'm gonna hit push pull. So I'm just gonna click on push pull. I'm gonna click and drag this up. When I do that, the bottom turns white. Everything around it is now the outside. This is basically, this could be grouped and become a solid. I have six faces. This is what happens with push pull on any face that is all by itself. And now it does not matter. So this is my, my first thing to note is uh, this sounds like I'm, I'm peddling software here, but use the most recent version. There's changes that have been made to push pull in the previous few versions that make it so that you're more likely to get proper faces on push pulls. So you can see I take this and I drag it down or I drag it up. It doesn't matter. I get a white cube or box. I should say box. I say cube sometimes and I mean box because all the sides are not the same, but I get a white cube either way. That happens whether it's flat on the ground like that or like this right here, this I have it at some angle. If I pull up this way or pull it down this way, it doesn't matter. I get that all white box either way. So that is something important to notice. And if you're using the most, if you're using like 2018, 19, you might have the situation where you pull it certain directions and it turns gray, you pull it other directions, it turns white. Uh, the most recent versions, like in the 2020s, are gonna have this updated, uh, I don't know, intelligence? Push pull is gonna work gooder, where it's gonna actually make sure that this is on the outside to get white no matter what. All right, let's look at the second thing, is know how push pull is gonna work with connected geometry. So this is that same square I had over there, and all I have here is a little box connected to one side. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up, and we're gonna take a look underneath. It basically performs exactly the same. So if I have just an edge connected or a single face connected, it's gonna perform the same way. However, if my geometry is completely connected to other geometry like this, when I pull this up, the assumption that push pull is going to make is that this is on a surface of some larger geometry. Now remember, it doesn't push pull doesn't recognize anything other than the face I'm hovering over. So as I pull this up, it goes, oh, I'm surrounded by geometry. There's a good chance that there's more geometry beyond that. So what it does is it pulls out of that surface and does not make a new face like this. So the assumption, like I said, is that this connected geometry has other connected geometry. Maybe I'm pulling this out of a solid or the side of a building or something like that. Push pulling or pushing in, same thing. If I grab this and push in, I'm gonna get this. It assumes that you know maybe this is a countertop and I'm pulling a sink down or I'm pushing a window in. E regardless of the actual use, if your face that you're push pulling is surrounded by other geometry, it's going to treat it as though it is part of a much larger world and not just a standalone shape like we saw in the previous examples. All right, thing number three, learn about your modifier keys. Modifier keys are so important, and yet it seems to be one of the last things people learn or, or acknowledge exist. Every command you use in SketchUp is gonna list some modifier keys down at the bottom. And they're gonna change depending on your, if you're on Windows or you're on Mac. So I'm gonna to refer to them as the modifier for what it does rather than say click option because if you're on a Windows machine, you're not gonna see option. It's gonna say something else here. So what I wanna look at here is there's two modifier keys for push pull. So first I'm just gonna do a regular push pull on the square, same square again. I'm gonna pull it up into a box. Now, if I hover over any side and push pull again, I'm just grabbing that face and stretching it out, right? This is how push pull works. This shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. This is what it does. Now, if you hit this first modifier key, you have the option to toggle create new starting face. What does that mean? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and tap it once. You don't have to hold it down, you tap it, and you'll notice you get the little plus right next to your, your cursor there. So when you pull up, look what happens. 
I'm going to pull another one out this way. See that line there? That's indicating that there's a new face there. So let's go in here. I'm going to go ahead and grab these three faces and delete them. This is what that created. So it's creating brand new faces and pulling that up as if it were a new surface. There are situations where you might want to do this. If I'm creating some kind, well, I mean, hey, if I'm creating a unique cubby design like I just did, that might be it. Uh, if there's some issues we'll touch on later where uh, push-pull stops you from extending past a certain geometry and you want to pull past it, you might have to create a new face. Uh, there are situations where this might happen. It is worth noting that as soon as I do this, I'm going to go ahead and undo my delete. This is not a solid shape anymore because it has interior geometry. So if you do something like this and create that new face, just be aware that it's in there. So even though I can't see it, I'll turn on x-ray. Even though I can't see it from the outside, these two faces are in here. So this is not a solid. This could not, you know, I couldn't use solid tools on this or anything like that because it has those new faces. But if you're in a situation where you want to intentionally add that geometry on top, you can do that with just a modifier key. The other modifier key is a little, I don't know, a little more, the, the use case for it's a little more obscure. So if I come in here and we'll go back into push pull, uh, whoops, that was, that's the wrong button. Let's try push pull in this push pull video. So I have this option down here, toggle stretch mode. So again, if I just come in here and push pull this up, it's gonna do this, right? This is what, just like we saw on that, that previous uh, example, but if I toggle stretch mode on, again, I'll tap that to get a little icon. A little icon is a face with an arrow pointing away from it. What that's gonna do is grab that face I have and move it like it's push pulling, but rather than push pulling and creating new sides perpendicular to the face, it's grabbing the edges that are already connected and just pulling it with. So those of you who are paying attention out there and use SketchUp, may already have said this, but what about move? Isn't that what move does? If I click move and I start moving vertically, exactly what that does. So why would you use push pull with that modifier key rather than just moving? Well, I don't know, maybe this, this is one thing. So that's how it's, I don't know, maybe this. It's because of this, like if, as I use move, I do have to make sure I lock into that vertical. Otherwise it can bounce off and, you know, connect to this other geometry over here on accident. Whereas push pull with the modifier key is going to only go, just like push pull only goes directly normal to a surface, so does this. So this is, this is a case where you might wanna use it. It's probably not something you use a lot. The one, the example that I was able to come up with for this was if I was ever pulling geometry that I wanted to stretch and I wanted to go perfectly 90 degrees to wherever the face was. I don't have an inference for this. I don't have an inference that says go perpendicular just to this one thing. I could create it. I could come up with some other geometry to hover over and figure out an inference to make this happen. I could put it into a group and reassign the axes, but this push pull with modifier is going to stretch that geometry and the connected geometry without having to create extra geometry to inference. And it doesn't matter what angle it's at because just like push pull, it's going to pull at 90 degrees to the surface that's selected. All right, we're doing good. Number four, this is a thing to know is the way that push pull works with other geometry nearby. So I have this thing, we got some blocks, some steps. I don't know what this is, but uh, I got steps here. I got some steps. If I go to pull this face up, I'll have the opportunity to use snap to end at this, this plane right here. Snap works, you know, just like anything else in, in uh, SketchUp. I can inference, I can inference the middle over here. But if I come up to this right here, I'm not gonna go past it. I can't inference up to this. Uh, there is certain geometry that is, you know, fills the whole edge like this that will stop your push pull from happening. Most people who hit this do, here's what, here's what most people do when they do this, right? So I click here, let it go, grab it, push pull it again. That works great. So if what you're trying to do is inference all the way up to this height, I could do that with two push pulls, super quick, not a real big inconvenience. But what if I want to pull this up exactly five feet from where it's at now? I come up here, it stops me at four foot four and a quarter. So what I could do is stop it and now drag it up the remainder, but I would have to know exactly what that remainder is. That means I'd have to do math and you guys know I'm going to resist that at all costs. What I could do instead is that modifier key, Remember the toggle create new starting face? 
when you create a new face, it kind of creates this new whole new set of geometry. And it doesn't care about the inferencing or, or the, the limitations of that previous geometry. So that means I could pull up here and I could type five foot enter and it will snap to exactly five foot. Now the downside of course is you have some extra geometry. If I wanted to maintain this as one piece, I would want to come in here and just real quick, maybe delete these edges. I do have to be conscious of the fact that if I turn on X-ray, I'm going to see I got one extra edge dangling in there. I want to get rid of that too. Again, if I wanted to keep this, but it is important to know that as you're modeling that modifier to that modifier to I pointed to the erase modifier, the toggle create new starting face will allow you to push past geometry where normal push pull will stop and limit you. All right. Final thing to note is pushing through walls. This, this is probably of all the issues people run into. This is probably the biggest one. So I have two walls here. This is a perfect rectangle pulled up. The front and back are the same distance apart on either side. If I grab this and I start pu push pulling, I can come through and I can actually inference to the back. You see that it's just snapping right in the back and I can release. Every once in a while you can't do that for whatever reason, you're at a weird angle, something like that. It's hard to, hard to snap to that face right there. If that's the case, what I'd recommend is try a corner right here. See right here, here, I have a very simple snap point. And as long as this wall is perpendicular to the world axes, then that's not a problem. But what if it's not perpendicular? We'll say I had this and I, whoops, took this geometry. Now it's, it's not perfectly, it actually doesn't matter. I can still snap back because I'm pushing perpendicular. I can actually still snap back to these points. So super easy way to do that. Now, what happens when the world's not perfect? It happens. I know that I want to say we can live in a perfect world, but we can't. So here, if I try to bring this back, I get some weird stuff when I try to inference the back wall. See, how it's just kind of like it's changing color and like just running through. Uh, if I inference this right here, it doesn't push through. If I inference this over here, it turns blue and runs through to the other side. There's an issue with this wall in that it's not perfectly square. This end is just slightly wider than this end, so I don't have parallel. This face and this face are not parallel. So what do I do in that case? Well, fortunately, it's kind of, it's not a terribly difficult fix. If I just drag my geometry through like that, triple click to select it all, right click, intersect face, with selection, then I can just grab this stuff, delete it, delete it. I mean, the ideal solution is to get your wall back in plane. These, the front and back should be parallel, but if for whatever reason, it's a remodel, it's an old house, it really looks like that, whatever. If you have to, you can just run it through, cut it off and you'll be good. Just like you had interacted or inter intersected with the back face. So there we go. Those are five things to know about using push-pull. As I do this, I'm, I'm thinking there's there's probably a couple other use cases I could come up with that would be good to talk about, but man, top five lists are cool, aren't they? Don't you just want to know the top five things? Six and seven, meh, they're good, probably good to know, but I'll pick them up on my own. Top five, that's where it's at. Hopefully you like that video. Uh, we're trying to get more and more sets of tips and, and, and information you can find in these level up SketchUp videos, because what we want to do is help you get to the next level and learn how to get the most out of SketchUp for desktop. Please like, please subscribe, please tell somebody about this, share it, and leave us a comment down below. Thanks a lot, guys. See you next time.